the good news is going into this, uh, into the COVID uh, economic downturn, uh, the fund was in far better shape than it had been in recent history. So that, so that's a positive. Uh, I think the biggest thing that we've taken away from the last few months is how we need to do a better job of uh, reforming our system to make sure that we're able to address these uh, situations like this in a timely manner. Uh, there's, there's the administration will claim that they've got very few cases left from March. I think they said they had maybe five to 10 cases. I've got five to 10 cases from original filings in March that are my constituents alone, and there's 99 assembly districts in the state. So it's, it's a much larger problem than they are, are, are leading or they're, or they're publicly stating. Um, and, and, you know, we don't want to be adversarial in this. We want to be able to find a pathway that addresses these people's concerns. I mean, we've been on the phone with constituents who are, I, there was a gentleman just recently, we were able, actually able to help him. He was down to $18 in his checking account. And when the, when the payment kind of finally came through, it, we've been we've had uh, constituents call us who unfortunately um, had already lost their house by the time the payments came through. So whether it be extending call center hours, whether it be hiring additional staff, and we've tried to provide advice and direction and, and, and flexibility uh, that the governor governor and, and uh, the secretary have asked for. Um, We've tried tried to provide suggestions. We even said, Governor Evers, you get $2 billion. Um, as we know, some of it has never been uh, allocated yet. You get $2 billion. Uh, how about if we do a uh, interest-free loan to these folks that are waiting adjudication, meaning these are some of the more complicated um, decisions that have to go through the process. You know what, if you're sitting there waiting for some bureaucrat to make the decision on whether or not you get unemployment or not, unfortunately, the people you're paying your bills to, the mortgage company, um, you know, your car payment, whatever it might be, they're not going to have the same level of expectation that you sit and wait wait patiently as unfortunately DWD has had with these folks on unemployment. So uh, it's something we're continuing to monitor. The um, the information coming from DWD, like I said, seems to paint a rosier picture than what we see. Um, I've talked about the uh, number of cases that are still left from March, uh, yet it, we also are hearing that the number, the length of time between filing and actually uh, payment is actually going up, not down. So it's going to continue to uh, be an issue that we're going to have to um, stay on top of and, and hopefully find a pathway that addresses these, these constituents' concerns because um, many of these people are unemployed for the first time in their life ever. These are people that uh, need the uh, resources that we that. We have it through unemployment, and we need to be able to get to that, get them to uh, to them. As far as whether or not um, we're going to need money from uh, to, ba to bail out the the fund, I think it's too early to say. I mean, in, in, during the last recession, we did end up borrowing money from the, the federal government to uh, keep the. Uh, unemployment fund solvent. If we have to do that again, that'll be a conversation we have. But if you also, you also might remember that we also, as our economy came back, it bounced back, we had more resources available to us. We also deposited money into that fund, GPR, so that we wouldn't have all this burden to simply fall on small businesses who have, I mean, you know, taken the brunt of this uh, downturn in the economy as well um, and are oftentimes on the edge of being able to open tomorrow. Um, and so we can't just simply think that uh, business is going to bail us all out uh, on, on the unemployment fund. We have, we as government need to be accountable as well. Yeah.